And as I look at this question, so um, you could uh, look up the formula from the textbook and just plug the numbers in. That's perfectly fine, perfectly doable, and no problem with that. But let me imagine a scenario where um, you are seeing this question somewhere where you don't have any other reference. You're just being told this and you have to calculate and you don't remember the formula of magnetic field in a toroid and you just uh, so imagining that scenario. Let me just do this from scratch. This is really the reason we teach Ampere's law because it, along with the Gauss's law, it allows you to calculate the field strength so quickly and simply in situations that exhibit high degree of symmetry, like a toroid does. So it says that we have a toroid uh, with this many turns of wires and, and carries the current I to giving me the inner and outer radii. It asks to find the magnetic field at these different points uh, of R. And I'm glad to see that all these are between these two. So, um, so let me quickly describe what a toroid looks like. You should imagine um, having something that has a, a rectangular cross section. It doesn't have to be rectangular, but it's the kind of the easiest to shape. So I will almost always deal with the rectangular uh, cross section of the toroid. And imagine um, revolving this uh, cross section with this as the axis. Then um, when you do that revolution, it's going to trace out of, uh, some solid thing. And that solid thing becomes a core on which you wrap up, wrap around the toroid wires. So, so this is the top surface of the toroid core. And uh, this is the bottom. OK, I think this is enough. <laughs> And you have to imagine wrapping around the wire. Um, so let let me wrap up the wire uh, so that as seen on this cross section, it's wrapped around uh, counterclockwise. So this is the sense in which I'll be wrapping the wires. So uh, as you look at this inner, um, along the inner radius of the toroid, you will see these wires poking out of, poking up out of the uh, plane and these wires will go out um, come down on, along the outer surface and then come around and then connect and so on uh, so that's uh, what this will look like uh, so sorry these drawings get super <laughs> complicated so i'm not gonna <laughs> throw them all just that it wraps around that way and um, we can imagine a view from the top which will help highlight the symmetry so in the view from the top, we have this uh, inner circle, this outer circle, and we have these uh, current poking out of the surface uh, along the inner radius, inner circle. And I'm not gonna draw all of them. When you count them all, you should have n equals 230 turns. <laughs> it pokes through 230 times. And then uh, these wires go out and after having gone outside, it then wraps down. And again, I'm not going to draw all of it, but there should be also 230 of them outside so that it, um, it, it there's the same number of poking out from inner to uh, ones poking you know, from out. So, okay. <laughs> now, first the question is asking for what is the direction of magnetic field um, at these locations? So it's, uh, it's good to think of these individual loops of uh, current. Uh, so you have a loop that's going counterclockwise. What kind of magnetic field do you get? If you are considering this counterclockwise loop, then the magnetic field that you get will be pointing out of the screen towards you. So you imagine that kind of magnetic field here. And as the loop turns, the magnetic field will turn with it. And so 
At this position, we describe the magnetic field that points this way. And as the loops turn, it magnetic field turns with it. So when you connect to all those points, um, you get a magnetic field that's uh, tracing out a, a circle. So that's going to be the direction of magnetic field. Let's see which direction, which description fits that direction. Magnetic field is perpendicular to toroid plane. Okay, that doesn't sound right. Uh, magnetic field points in, in tangential direction. Yeah, that sounds about right. This is what I would describe as tangential. Magnetic field, it does not point in one Cartesian direction. And it does not point in the radial direction. So yes, this is correct. So... Now what we need is uh, we need a formula for magnetic field because it's asking magnetic field at this distance is some value. So this is where we need to apply Ampere's law. I think as you look at this, you can get a sense of symmetry here. There's a rotational symmetry. If you imagine rotating this whole thing about this axis that's uh, perpendicular to the plane, then uh, as you rotate, nothing changes. So there's that rotational symmetry. And it'll turn out that that's enough to figure out the magnetic field along this path, for example. So um, you start out with a statement of Ampere's law. Ampere's law says that the closed loop integral of B dot DL is equal to uh, four pi Coulomb constant over C squared times current and closed. And um, for you to get any closer to finding this B, you need an Amperian loop. Uh, so I drew the symbol of, you know, closed loop, but what closed loop? So you need to choose that closed to Amperian loop. And here the natural thing to do is use this circle that's going along the direction of magnetic field as your Amperian loop. And in fact, let's just go in the same direction as magnetic field. Then B dot DL is super simple. That simply becomes the strength of magnetic field times the circumference of the loop. So if this is a loop at radius R, it's going to be 2 pi R. Um, and the reason I can simply do that instead of trying to do this integral is because of that rotational symmetry. I can argue that magnetic field at one point or another point, they all have the same magnitude that I'm calling B naught. So, okay, so that's uh, equal to these coefficient times a uh, current enclosed is where you have to be careful. It's not just this current because that would represent a single one of these. Well, um, there's one and there's more. <laughs> there's uh, 230 of them. So current enclosed should be the number of turns times the current per, uh, per turn or current in the wire. So, okay, I think I can just solve this for uh, B, B naught. So solving it for B naught, it's... Uh, um, uh, pi is cancel. A factor of two cancels one factor of two there, and R moves over, so I have um, two K over C squared R times N I. I think I got everything. Yeah, that's the expression for my magnetic field uh, as a uh, in terms of all the known coefficients and the distance r. And uh, and this r should be between the inner and outer um, radii of the of the toroid. If you go outside of that region, either uh, further either further inside or further outside, then um, then <laughs> this whole derivation is not quite valid. That's why I was checking to see all these positions are within the uh, within the, the volume of the toroid. So let me plug in the numbers using Wolfram Alpha and, uh, and we'll take it from there. So my magnetic field at the innermost is two times Coulomb constant divided by speed of light squared. Uh, let me actually, uh, times N, uh, 230 turns times the current 18 ampere and then divided by everything in the denominator speed of light times the 
distance uh, 7.6 centimeter. And I'll just select all from alpha to all the unit conversion, looking up constant and all that. And, and then for the, so that'll give me an answer. Okay, 10.9 millitesla. Look in the usual direction. 10.9 millitesla uh, for the uh, closest distance. And I can just swap the 7.6 to 8.2 and 8.4 to get the other values. So they should be getting, they should be getting smaller. Um, this is uh, um, one of the feature of the magnetic field due to a toroid. Um, because toroid looks, uh, in some sense, quite similar to a solenoid. And for a solenoid, within the solenoid, the magnetic field is uh, uniform, constant. For a toroid, it's not uniform, it's not constant. It varies with the radius. 9.86. So that's it. Um, you could also, again, look up the formulas, but this is done under scenario where what if you don't have the formulas handy? Can you just drive them from scratch? And for toroid, the answer should be resounding yes. It's a simple enough setup that with a quite uh, with a quick application of Ampere's law, you can drive the expression. You don't have to look up anything.